på vegne av Tia Tøvri og brukerforeningen i 360 vil jeg ønske dere velkommen til webinar om automatisk arkivering av e-poster. Litt praktisk informasjon før vi begynner. Webinaret tas opp, og alle deltakere får til sendt lenke til opptak etterpå. Dere kan stille spørsmål i chatten, og vi har et team som svarer på spørsmålene så godt kan. Men jeg vil bare poengtere at dette er en ny funksjonalitet som kom nå fra versjon 5.18. Vi på i dag har ingen kunder som benytter fullt denne funksjonaliteten, så hvis vi ikke kan svare deres spørsmål nå, vil dette bli fullt opp i etterkant. Mitt navn er Tatjana Mazur. Jeg er systemansvarlig og systemforvalter av 360 i IKT Agder samarbeidet. Samarbeid, interkommunalt samarbeid som består av 14 kommuner og en fylkeskommune i Sør-Norge. Jeg har ni kommuner og en fylkeskommune som bruker 360. Jeg har med meg også Thomas og Nikita. Vil dere introdusere dere? Ikke 360, ansvarlig produktsjef for e-post. Nikita, jeg er en software arkitekt for this module. Yeah, and working in Bobby 316 department, yeah. Agenda. Jeg skal bare si et par ord av hvorfor denne funksjonaliteten er viktig, og hvorfor tjent og øvrig kom med dette. Så gir jeg ordet til Thomas og Nikita som hjelper oss gjennom hele prosessen og hvordan dette kan konfigureres videre. Hvordan vi kan få denne funksjonaliteten videre. Så blir det demo av Nikita. Som sagt, mitt navn er Tatjana Mazur. Jeg er også en leder i styret i 360 brukerforeningen som er et interesseforum og som er drevet av å få brukere 360. Alle kunder av Tiet og Evri som bruker 360 blir automatisk medlem i brukerforeningen. Forumet er vår arena hvor vi utveksler erfaringer, deler informasjon og holder oss oppdatert om nyheter. Vi også i samarbeid med Tiet og Evri organiserer temamøter og webinarer. Brukerforeningen melder interesse, og Tiet og Evri stiller med relevante ressurspersoner. Her må jeg si at vi i Brukerforeningen er avhengig av deres hjelp og tilbakemeldinger. Har dere et forslag til tema dere ønsker å ta opp? Ta kontakt med oss, så melder vi dette videre til Tiet og Evri og prøver å få de interessante temaer på. I dag skal Tiet og Evri fortelle oss om ny funksjonalitet som blir tilgjengelig fra versjon 5.18, 360 Process Library og automatisk e-postarkivering. Noen år siden lanserte Arkivverket en visjon om innebygd arkivering. Offentlige ansatte skulle slippe å bruke tid på manuell arkivering. Arkiveringen skal ikke lenger være noe man tenker på i etterkant av oppgave, men noe som skjer løpende og automatisk mens du jobber. Automatisk arkivering av e-poster er en viktig steg i å nå dette målet og visjonen til Arkivverket. Det er ikke bare en god praktisk, det er nødvendighet for en var organisasjon, avhengig om det er privat virksomhet eller om det er offentlig. Arkivering sikrer at vi oppfyller loven. Det reduserer risiko for tap av viktig informasjon og øker effektiviteten i vår daglige drift. Vi frigjør verdifulle ressurser som ellers skal bruke tid på å dra de e-postene. Ved å investere i riktig programvare og gi nødvendig opplæring til en satte, 
kan vi sikre til at vår e-postkommunikasjon er trikk organisert og tilgjengelig når vi trenger den. Vi alle erfarte at om det er en innsyn eller noe annet, så er det mulig å finne for at den personen som har svart på den e-post har sluttet å glemt å arkivere det i arkivsystemet. Så det er veldig spent. Dette er en funksjonalitet som vi ønsket og ventet lenge. Så det er veldig spent hva Thomas og Nikita har å si nå. Vær så god, Thomas. Takk. Det var en bra introduksjon, Tatiana. Vi skal jo gå ganske dypt inn i automatisk e-postarkivering i løpet av det webinaret her. Men jeg tenkte først å si litt hvorfor automatisk arkivering er viktig for i Public 360. Og så litt om hvordan vi har organisert automatisk arkivering generelt. Og det er jo som Tatiana sier, vi ønsker å støtte Archiving by Design. Vi ønsker at arkiveringen skal være en sømløs del av deres arbeidsprosesser, både for å øke effektiviteten og kvaliteten. Arkiveringen. Og når vi lager arkiveringsprosesser i Public 360, så prøver vi å dele det opp i to separate steg, som illustrasjonen på sliden prøver å vise. Vi ønsker at det skal skilles mellom å hente data fra kilden og få det inn trykk i Public 360, og det å gjøre ferdig arkiveringen ved hjelp av en arkiveringsprosess. Når det gjelder e-post, som er den som står øverst til venstre, når e-post er kilden, så går vi og henter e-post fra det som vi kaller, hvis vi går litt lenger til høyre her, det som vi kaller for GEMI, Generic Email Importer, som har vært i Public 360 en stund. Vi bruker den for å få det trygt inn i uregisterte dokumenterlista, og så bruker vi den nye e-postarkiveringsprosessen for å få det ferdig i arkivet. Nå er det jo sånn at e-postarkivering er jo ikke den første arkiveringsprosessen som vi har laget på denne måten her. Vi har jo laget Startskudd, Everyone og Landbruksdirektoratet, basert på den samme modellen. Og nå, bare for å gi dere et lite glimt inn i hva som kommer til å komme, så kommer vi til å, vi jobber nå med Kobo, som er et system fra Husbanken, som der dokumentene kommer inn via svar inn, og vi lager en arkiveringsprosess for det. Og så ser vi også på det å arkivere Altin-skjemaer, for i Altin 3 Studio så er det mulighet til, for å sende inn skjemaer ved hjelp av e-formidling. Så for dere av dere som har e-formidling og som bruker alt din skjema, så er det her en veldig spennende ting som vi gleder oss veldig til også å se på litt senere i år og lage en egen arkiveringsprosess for det. Det som er litt spesielt med de to nye arkiveringsprosessene som jeg snakket om her, Kobo og alt din skjema, det er at der bruker vi et verktøy som vi har holdt på å utvikle i ganske lang tid nå, og som vi lanserer ut mot sommeren, som heter Automatic Archiving Enabler. Og det som er spennende med det verktøyet der, er at man da kan konfigurere ferdig arkivering av nye arkiveringsprosesser, sånn at dere selv, hvis dere har et fagsystem for eksempel, så kan det være aktuelt å da konfigurere arkivering fra det systemet. Det er noe som vi gleder oss veldig til å få ut i markedet, og vi tror det kommer til å skape stor verdi for dere i Archive by Design. Litt om hvordan automatisk arkivering i Public 360 foregår som det er en praktisk. Vi prøver å få til en hel automatisk arkivering, sånn at dere skal slippe å gjøre noe i det hele tatt når arkiveringen skjer. Det skal bli ferdig. Hvis det er en ny saksbehandling, så oppretter arkiveringsprosessen en ny sak. 
Vi knytter til relaterte data som søker ansvarlig enhet og eiendom til saken. Vi legger til dokumenter som hører til saksbehandlingen under samme sak. For å finne ut hvordan automatisk arkivering for en spesifikk så jobber vi tett med Discovery-kunder og hvert system vi lager støtte for. Så hvis det er noen i publikum i dag som for eksempel kunne tenke seg å være Discovery-kunde for alt i en skjema, så gi gjerne beskjed om det. Det var det jeg hadde om introduksjon. Nå skal vi dykke ned i e-postarkivering. Nikita. Now I just give the, give the word to you, and you can show the magic in the email archiving process. Can I share my screen? Uh, yeah, so this is uh, my uh, outlook, uh, like my source uh, from where I'm going to archive uh, my email uh, to 360. Uh, yeah, so here you see uh, different uh, folders uh, here. I have an inbox, that's uh, the default one, and then I have some different uh, folders like EM and IS, uh, the master VMs. Uh, I'm uh, going to show you for one of uh, the two folders here, EN and Master VM, because I have only one account and I want to show you two different scenarios uh, with uh, using only one account. So I will not be directly using the inbox to archive uh, my emails, but uh, this is possible. You can use your inbox also to archive emails to 360. Uh, in uh, here in my uh, this pane, you see a couple of uh, emails. Uh, if I open uh, one of uh, the emails, let's uh, open this one. And uh, here you see that this is a kind, it's a report. And in this, uh, in this report, you see a case number uh, here. And that this is the case number from P360. So what does that uh, mean? That uh, we want to archive this email to this case in P360. So my cases already exist in 360 and I want to archive this email to that under that particular case. So how do we do that? Then we have to go to uh, 360. In 360, uh, everything will be done in uh, 360 admin uh, portal. So as uh, Thomas uh, mentioned, uh, couple of minutes uh, back that uh, we have a feature called the uh, general email importer and that's there since quite long. So first we have to do the configuration for that module because it's a two step process. First you will import uh, the email using uh, the general email importer and then the, the second part is the automatic archiving because the first part is not archiving, it's putting uh, the email as an unregistered document in 360 and from that unregistered uh, list the automatic uh, archive will start processing it. So here under uh, the configuration in the left uh, panel you see a configuration uh, menu. So configuration, you have uh, email uh, option uh, here. You click on this uh, email uh, option. You will uh, you will see the journal uh, setting of uh, this journal email importer, which will be by default off. So this feature is default off. If uh, we will on it once we do all the configuration. Here you have uh, email accounts uh, where you will actually configure the, your uh, account uh, here. I have two account as a uh, two configuration for uh, one account, as I said, because I have two different scenarios uh, to show. Uh, how you add it, you click on this uh, add button and fill out the details. I will show you the details. In this uh, email, first uh, you will uh, type uh, the email uh, at ID uh, for that account and uh, you give uh, a relevant uh, name uh, to that uh, account. 
Uh, the service URL API type authentication type is a little technical part. Uh, we will help you uh, while we will uh, do the configuration. It's basically uh, seeing what kind of exchange we are using and we, uh, what kind of services uh, we will use uh, when we try to uh, connect to your inbox or the Outlook. Uh, so that, that's the technical uh, details uh, here. And you have the option of doing a basic authentication. That's like you, you provide the username password here or you let uh, the user open ID connect. So we will not go into that details of uh, those. Now here's the important uh, part. Uh, import from which folder? Because I, I showed you in uh, my inbox, I have a couple of folders here. Uh, you can directly uh, write inbox uh, there. That's also OK. Or you have a dedicated uh, folders for a system and uh, you want to have a different configuration for each system, then you specify the folder uh, name. How you specify it? Uh, it's a text uh, field. You just uh, write it uh, here like inbox or uh, whatever the name of the folder here. Uh, success folder is that uh, once uh, the email is successfully imported uh, from uh, the Outlook or from uh, the email inbox, then uh, uh, as a success, we will transfer that email to a success folder. Uh, it's like a uh, yeah, that, that's how we are showing that these are the emails which has been successfully archived uh, to 360. As I said earlier, also it's a two way process. So one successful is importing uh, uh, leading the emails from inbox correctly and putting in unregistered document and from there uh, the automatic archiving like this process library that's the second success here and then you have a same uh, similar uh, failed fo folder if something goes wrong while uh, importing or uh, while leading the emails uh, then it will go to the field so you have a track which email got failed uh, which email is successfully archived uh, this ID here is uh, the ID of, uh, for this 360 process library email archiving. That's automatic archiving. So after every successful import, call this uh, tool, call this process library to, uh, to do the um, final archive or the register the email uh, under the correct case. Or if case is not there, try to create the case. Here also you can uh, uh, mention the document responsibility, like who should be responsible for this uh, document. Uh, it's not necessary that you specify uh, the name of uh, the person here, but uh, you can also uh, connect uh, this document with department also, and afterwards you can distribute it to a respective uh, users uh, under that uh, department. That's uh, the configuration uh, for the journal uh, email uh, importer. And now you see this uh, block here, uh, the second email process configuration. This is uh, for the automatic uh, archiving. Uh, it's a, uh, for this process uh, library, like to automate uh, the process. First is uh, the default value. So as uh, this process will going to create a document and case, so we need uh, some kind of a metadata, uh, the value set which we will going to use when we are trying to create a case and document. Uh, you will be wondering from uh, where this uh, uh, list uh, is uh, coming. Uh, these are the list, the default uh, list is coming from um, are the default uh, values uh, already we have in 360 uh, under the configuration you will see default uh, values uh, here and there will be a lot of uh, uh, will have a you will already have a default value here or if uh, you can also create it but uh, when you install this uh, module you will get two default values by a standard uh, module and that those two default value is email auto archive case default value, email auto archive document default value. So these two default values you will get with this module uh, installation. You can uh, use uh, this one uh, with the try to edit uh, this one and put your uh, configuration as per your need. And then uh, you will uh, select uh, then you will select uh, that default uh, value here because those default value will be available in the list uh, as uh, as well. That's the case default value and then there will be a document default value. 
And uh, this is uh, very important uh, here. That's a search pattern. As uh, as uh, Thomas uh, mentioned uh, in the last uh, slide uh, of his, uh, that uh, if the case is not there, we will create the case. This process will create the case. Or to to do that, first we have to check if the case is there or not. So how, how, how this process is going to do that? So we have a def, uh, default like a standard patterns here, like uh, if in the in the email there might be case number, there might be document number. So do you want uh, us or uh, this process so that to check uh, for the case number or document number already available in the email and, and find out uh, the case information? Uh, connected to that already mentioned document number or case number uh, in that email. So you can select a pattern uh, from uh, from the list. So uh, as I showed you uh, one email uh, here. Uh, that uh, this email is already having a case numbers because my uh, uh, and my account here is already configured with the case number because I know that this uh, the system which I am configuring all the emails are going to be with the case number. So you will select uh, that pattern and then you will uh, save uh, save it. So that's uh, the one uh, configuration you did uh, uh, for uh, this uh, account uh, here. Once uh, everything is uh, done here, then uh, then we will go to the journal uh, setting here and then we will enable uh, enable uh, the process uh, from here. Uh, how this uh, journal email importer uh, uh, runs? Uh, there is a job in 360 uh, to do that. Uh, we have a journal email importer job. You will uh, see this job in uh, under the monitoring and uh, job uh, uh, section here and this will uh, this will uh, execute and it will read uh, the email from uh, the configured the accounts or the inboxes uh, you have configured. And uh, the uh, and uh, the best uh, part uh, here is uh, that you go to this uh, account here. And uh, for each account you will get a status here in this one. If I click on uh, this uh, status, you will see here what had happened uh, so far once you have started uh, this uh, uh, like enable uh, this uh, process, what all happened here. So you will see like it has made the connection to the Outlook uh, and also it try it's able to read uh, the email and it's able to complete the process. Also you will see uh, see some messages uh, from uh, the auto archiving uh, process as well that it has uh, tried uh, to read uh, this uh, e uh, email from the unregistered list and archive it and then you will see some uh, information back also that the you see here this document number uh, is available here. So I think this is a very nice uh, way to keep a track uh, because uh, this job uh, which I showed you earlier, this will not give any any result. Of course, if something goes wrong, then it will give you something back, but it, it's more like a technical thing. But about, uh, but for each like email, you will not receive any message here. So to see uh, the status, you have to go to the account and uh, and you can uh, you can do this one. You can refresh uh, this log so because uh, it will keep on adding uh, the logs uh, logs here. So this way you see uh, see the logs. Uh, yeah, I will uh, show you one of uh, the document uh, uh, the email I have uh, archived uh, using uh, uh, using uh, uh, this uh, automatic uh, process. So as I uh, showed you this uh, my um, this case number, I already have it in uh, 360 and that's uh, I want to uh, archive this as a document under that uh, case. So this is uh, the case already created in uh, 360 and uh, you see that uh, this is the first uh, document uh, which got archived uh, to this uh, this uh, case. If I click on uh, uh, if I click on uh, this uh, document, then you will see uh, that uh, the sender who sends uh, uh, the email wasn't available in 360 in my 360, so it added as an unregistered uh, contact uh, under the document, and the recipient of course was uh, the document uh, which I set it while configuring the account. Uh, that was uh, the responsible. 
And all this, so you see the document category and the status. Uh, all this are coming uh, from uh, the default uh, value, default value set. And uh, we have archived uh, uh, the incoming that the email and also the attachment uh, in, inside. This is how it will uh, look in uh, 316. I have uh, one more uh, email uh, sample here, which says that uh, please connect uh, this uh, email to this uh, 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 to the case connected to this document number. So here we are not using a case number as a pattern, but we are using a document number as a pattern here. So in the same uh, account, if I go here and if I select uh, the document number now, so then this configuration will try to look for the document number in the email uh, somewhere. So first uh, it will look in the email subject. Uh, if it's not found, then it will look in the email body as well. So there's a two possibility. You can either put it in uh, the email body or in the email subject. So that's uh, that's the first uh, scenario I want to explain uh, where you have a default, you have a standard uh, like patterns uh, and a simple scenario uh, like from this list you can select uh, any one of the pattern. But then of course in real life that's not uh, enough. There might be a emails uh, which is uh, not fulfilling with these patterns which we have provided or which comes with this uh, standard uh, module. So what do we do in that uh, in that case? Uh, uh, I will show you one. Uh, email, uh, for uh, that. Here is uh, one uh, email and you see in this uh, email there is this ID here coming. And uh, this is not the case number. This is not the document number. This is some kind of ID. So what the, uh, the expected uh, behavior is that? Please try to see if something related to this ID is already been archived. So it will see that. Uh, OK, so if something is not, this is like a first uh, email coming uh, application coming, then it will create a case with this particular information, this ID. And the next time, Whenever there is a, uh, emails uh, connected to this ID or what, uh, or this maybe some inquiry ID, then uh, the, all the emails will connect to the same case, uh, the same uh, yeah, same case in uh, 360. So how do we achieve this kind of uh, scenario? So uh, for that, uh, 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 we will uh, have a different uh, configuration uh, for account. Uh, as I said, I have. Uh, only one account. So in my here, I have uh, different folders uh, for uh, supporting those kind of things. So so now I will target uh, to this uh, folder. I have some something called EN, it's an inquiry kind of uh, application. Will come to that uh, folder. I'll go here and then. Uh, all the above, uh, like this email account description, the the uh, will be will be. Uh, as I explained it, uh, that you will fill out the account details, give the name, and here I'm I'm uh, putting the import uh, folder as en because now this is a different kind of uh, uh, a pattern here in this uh, email. Yeah, you can have a different success and fail folder. That's also possible, and this will remain same because I want to. Uh, this is I want to with the same process uh, library, and now here you see. Uh, either you can reuse uh, this case uh, default value here or document default value, or there's an option you you create a new default value set. I showed how you can create it, uh, the default value set, and then that default value set will be listed uh, here in this once you created uh, from uh, once you created from uh, this uh, wizard here in the in the default uh, value. Now here there's a no pattern uh, for that uh, kind of a scenario. So here comes the advanced uh, mapping and advanced configuration setting for this uh, process. Uh, I will uh, switch uh, to something very technical, but do not uh, worry about uh, this thing. This is exactly the same configuration. We did it through the UI, but uh, in a different way, but it, this is exactly the same. We are going to do what we did it uh, for the case number and the document number. 
So what we did for the case number, we selected the case number and document number from the list, but here there's no list. But you see the pattern here? That's the same same keyword. That's a pattern. And here the pattern I'm seeing that because my ID will come something uh, something like this. So I uh, this is a regular expression I'm uh, writing. Uh, so you don't have to pay too much attention to this regular expression, but just uh, consider that this is the ID coming and that's the pattern coming. Then, then this is the pattern. Then what do you want to do with this pattern? We already have a default value set configured, but uh, but you want to override that default value. OK, yeah, I have a default value, but uh, but I don't want to use uh, some of the uh, meta which is configured in default value. Then you can do it here as well. I am saying that whenever this type of uh, uh, email with this pattern is coming, please, it's a restricted kind of email. So put uh, the access code as uh, restricted and put some paragraph here. You can also change the uh, title of the document uh, when it, uh, when uh, uh, the, uh, title and if you don't want to uh, give a same title as uh, the email uh, subject, you can change the title uh, title as well. So you have the option uh, to do the document uh, mapping and uh, for same for the case mapping because there might be not be the case already in uh, 360 so we have to create the case as well that's uh, the default uh, uh, the metadata mapping but uh, uh, but in the case number and document number we know that that we have to search in 360 uh, with the case number for the case entity and for document number for the document entity but here with this uh, this ID, we don't know what this ID it is. So then you have to tell the process where you can search this ID. So that's why this is search mapping. So this is the way you find the case details. So now you are setting the filters also here, like the criteria. OK, so that case type should be two case type, a like SOC type. And uh, I know that this is uh, this is some kind of external ID which is coming from external system, and this will be stored as an external ID in 360. So I'm telling I'm telling this process that please search this particular uh, pattern in an external ID of uh, the case. And if you found uh, something, uh, then please use that uh, case. Else, please create the case with this as an external ID. So the next time when uh, uh, the email will come with this particular uh, ID, then it will find that case in 360 and put uh, uh, the email uh, under that uh, under that case. So it is exactly the same which we did it uh, in uh, the UI, but little in a different uh, uh, in a different approach in a different manner. Uh, this will be uh, easy when we start uh, working very closely uh, with uh, with this one. So I will uh, show you uh, in 360 one of uh, the which I yeah. So that's uh, this is the archived uh, that um, the email. Uh, so now the case wasn't uh, there in uh, 360. So it the process has created uh, the case, and you see that this is some title coming from because there is no title for case in the email. Uh, it, it was just the email subject. So this is coming uh, from uh, this uh, mapping. I have uh, done it here, even though I have a, a default value, but I'm overriding uh, with this. I'm saying that uh, please put the title like this. So that's the title of my case. And this is uh, the document which got uh, the email, which is uh, as a, as a under um, under this one. So yeah, so that's the first one is a pretty basic one when you know it's a simple like case number and document number. And then the second one is like more advanced, uh, advanced uh, capability. Uh, in future, if you have a different system, you want to configure a diff different system, then then we don't have to deploy anything to support that. You just have to uh, configure. Uh, uh, configure the new. Uh, 
configuration for the account and uh, this thing and see that if the pattern is available here. If not, then we will add a uh, one more section uh, with the new pattern uh, in this. Um, uh, in this uh, section here and and this uh, uh, advanced uh, mapping uh, this will be stored in a uh, 360 so you can you can look these things in 360 so you don't have to like uh, uh, explicitly ask for uh, any uh, yeah that, that where, where, where should we uh, put this uh, technical uh, thing or the JSON uh, schema thing. So you will you will see those uh, those information here in the code table. We have a code table uh, for uh, for for that. So once uh, that is uh, done, uh, then as I I, I said uh, that you will see uh, the status is that it has been configured and then it's uh, uh, it's uh, archived and also it will give you uh, some information uh, here in the in the document as a as a document number. Uh, if something uh, you, even doing everything, all this thing, the configuration, advanced mapping and all this default uh, value set, you, it's sometimes something still missing and then the, the automatic archive will will fail like some kind of information is missing. Then you will uh, you will uh, see uh, the information in the unregistered uh, because uh, the document was forced or put in the unregistered. So you will see that this document has not been archived. It is still in the unregistered list, but in the note section of uh, the unregistered, you will see the message, detailed message that why it was it failed uh, when doing automatic archiving. So that is also an option, a nice thing that you will see the whole whole error message uh, there. And uh, yeah, OK, every everything is this uh, all is uh, documented and uh, yeah, this uh, will be released. Uh, it, 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 it will be uh, in a released uh, document. Uh, that was. Um, uh, then. Uh, uh, Very, very good uh, demo. Thank you. Uh, we were going like deep in this webinar, but it is uh, so that you guys in the webinar can understand what kind of possibilities that there are in this archiving uh, tool. And of course, we will uh, we will help you uh, configure this so you're not left on your own. Uh, ja, nå går det til jeg skulle snakke norsk, egentlig. Ja, nå. Så da er det egentlig, uh, hvis dere er interessert i å vite mer eller et uh, uforpliktende tilbud uh, på modulen. Modulen heter 360 Process Library Email Arch Archiving. Uh, så uh, ta kontakt med kundeansvarlig uh, deres. Uh, vi håper jo at det er mange som ser behov for å benytte den her for å få helt automatisk kvering av e-post. Uh, nå har jeg også sett at det er, jeg har prøvd å svare så godt jeg kan på noen spørsmål. Det er et par uh, spørsmål som jeg gjerne kunne tenke meg at vi liksom, uh, snakket litt grann, uh, mer om. Uh, så er det greit at jeg bare tar det kortet. Yes, for det, er, uh, det var ett spørsmål som gikk på trenger man å konfigurere alle uh, e-postkontoene som man skal hente e-post fra, og det må man. Men det som er liksom hovedscenariet i, uh, i uh, use casen her, at du har sånne felles poster for organisasjonen deres, kommunen deres eller 
eh, eller organisationen som dere tilhører, at du har en typisk sånn post at, altså navnet på bedriften deres, eller organisationen eller kommunen, .no, sånn at det er liksom de felles postkassene som vi tänker er det primære området som man bruker denne importen på arkiveringen til. Man kan også fint sette det opp for enkeltpersoner i organisasjonen. Da må du konfigurere det for de personene. Og det som er viktig da, er at da bør man konfigurere en egen mappe i Outlook, eller det e-postprogrammet som man bruker, og, og dra den arkivverdige posten over i den mappa, sånn at man ikke eh, arkiverer alt som ligger i innboksen, for det vil ikke være hensiktsmessig, og heller ikke, eh, ja, det, det vil ikke være riktig å gjøre. Uh, and then there was a question in, uh, in uh, the chat that I have to ask Nikita about. So, uh, the question was, if you try to archive a document into a case that is already closed, what will happen then? Will you try to archive it on the closed case or will it create a new? It will fail. Yeah. Because yeah. the case is closed. Yeah. So that is the, that is the um, answer to that question. But I guess in the advanced way of doing it, you could have, you could map it mm -hmm. so that it would create a new case if the case was closed. So you could check on both uh, case number and the status of the case, right? Yeah. 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 So not man can, if man bruker avancer uh, mapping, som uh, Nikita viste man. Jeg gjør det sånn at uh, man mapper sånn at det opprettes en ny sak hvis, uh, hvis den gamle saken er, uh, er lukket. Det var egentlig, uh, jeg kan bare sjekke kjapt om det har kommet noen flere spørsmål kanskje. Spørsmål her, vil det være utfordring å ta i bruk e-mail archiving når vi bruker online version? Nei, det vil det ikke være. Det vil fungere. Yes. Da har vi eh, fått sagt det vi hadde lyst til å si, Tatiana. Jeg vet ikke om du har noe kommentar eller på. Jeg har ikke noe spesielt. Jeg bare skulle si at det er veldig interessant. Det ser litt komplisert ut, men jeg kan ikke kan si at dere nå jobber først med en kommune som skal ta det i bruk, og som Tieta Øvri sa, dere blir ikke alene, så få hjelp til å sette det opp. Så det er det er veldig spennende. Jeg ser mye potensial, potensial, eh, potensial i dette, eh, så det er veldig spennende å se fortsettelsen. Mm. Altså det er også jo flere eh, kunder eh, tar dette i bruk, eh, jo flere kanskje ønsker og utvikling eh, kan vi gjøre sammen med dere, med Tiet og Evri, for når man bruker dette og får hva Um, hva som skjer man kan se, uh, hva som skjer, hva som uh, feiler og begynner å ønske om den ønsker endringer, så da kan vi jobbe sammen og videreutvikle. Jeg tror det er, det er veldig viktig å uh, videreutvikle og tilpasse til de uh, behovene som uh, var og eneste kommunen eller kommunen har. Tusen takk, Tatiana. Uh, og så vil jeg nevne at som utrullingsmessig så har eh så har vi to eh early release kunder. Eh och vi regner med att den första kommer till att gå i 
Oslo med sin første prosess, en skjenkebevilgingsprosess, i løpet av april. Det er planen nå. Så da er det bare å melde sin interesse, så vi ut til dere folk. Da vil jeg bare si tusen takk for alle som var på webinaret og håper det her var interessant.